This is Neil Patwari. In this segment, you won't believe what Offset does to QPSK. And I'm sorry for the clickbait title to this video. This video has nothing to do with this Offset. But it does have to do with quadrature phase shift keying and how it is not very energy efficient. To tell you about this, I'm going to have to talk about QPSK. And we've already mentioned that it has these two basis functions and it has a complex baseband representation like this where we amplitude modulate different pulses that are integer multiple of T sub S apart. And those amplitudes come from the complex plane over here that has phi zero on one axis on the real axis and phi one on the imaginary axis. And we have four possible constellation points in QPSK. So what does that look like? So on a time plot here on the left, you can see the real and imaginary part of QPSK. We've gone over this uh, before. This is using a square root raised cosine pulse shape. It has randomly selected symbols over a period of time. And when I plot the phase trajectory plot here on the right, we see the real part of the complex baseband signal plotted against the imaginary part of the complex baseband signal. And you can imagine that at any particular time, like this green vertical line, we get a particular value on the real axis and a particular value on the imaginary axis. This one looks like it's at about 0, 0 at this time. So then at that time, you would see a little dot here. And as I drag this green line from left to right, you would see that dot move on this plot and then trace out these blue lines on the phase trajectory plot. Now, some background, a transmitter generally needs an amplifier to increase its signal amplitude to the desired level that your communication system needs. For example, my cell phone transmits about half a watt. It needs that in order to get its signal all the way to the receiver at a base station. But it needs DC power to do this. On a mobile device, this power comes from a battery, and the amplifier actually consumes a large amount of that battery. Um, probably besides the screen, that's what's consuming most of your battery. So we need that to be efficient. We need the amplifier to be very efficient, but linear amplifiers are not very efficient. Class A linear amplifiers are at most 50% power efficient. If this is going to make our battery last less time, then what we're going to sometimes do as engineers is we're going to play a trade-off where we can come up with signals that can be amplified with nonlinear class C amplifiers. So class C nonlinear amplifiers can be 90% power efficient. Well, what makes us be allowed to use a nonlinear amplifier? Well, the types of signals that are able to be sent with a nonlinear amplifier are called constant envelope. And constant envelope modulations have this property that the amplitude being sent is almost the same at all points in time. Now the envelope is the distance from the origin. So in this plot, it's this distance here. This is called the envelope. As long as that stays about the same, you can call your modulation a constant envelope modulation. And here you can see for QPSK, it's not constant because sometimes it actually gets very close to the origin. There's this, this power here that is very low compared to the peak power, which is this distance here. So it's not a constant envelope modulation. And if I try to amplify with a nonlinear amplifier, that nonlinearity, because I'm amplifying a whole range of different amplitudes, is going to create intermodulation effects, that is, signals that are outside of the band that I'm allowed to transmit and so violate the rules of uh, spectrum use. So we're not going to be able to use that nonlinear amplifier on this signal that has a wide variety of envelopes that are being sent. We actually want a modulation that is a constant envelope. And here's the thing. QPSK works wonderfully as a constant envelope modulation. If we make one modification, in offset QPSK, we have almost the identical two basis functions, except that the pulse shape for the phi1 of t function is just shifted by t sub s over 2 to the right. That is, it's delayed by half a symbol period. That's the only thing that happens. 
And this leads to our S of t in the offset QPSK case having an imaginary part delayed again by t sub s over 2. Let's look at what happens to the time plot S of t for offset QPSK. So in offset QPSK, I have shifted the imaginary part of the signal by t sub s over 2. This is the same data that I sent in the QPSK example, except that the imaginary part is shifted. So at that same time, when the real part and the imaginary part were zero on that previous plot, now the real axis, the real part is still zero, but the imaginary part is negative. It's not at zero. It's now negative 0.1. And so it would be kind of like here on the on the axis where the real part is zero, the imaginary part is negative. As we scooch this forward in time, a uh, half a symbol period, that real part is going to go to negative 0.1. So it's going to be going in this direction. It's going to stay there until the real part switches back to positive 0.1. And it's going to do that, but you see that it's staying away from the origin. And when the imaginary part, so at you know, time uh, right here on the time axis, when that part is going from minus 0.1 to positive 0.1, the real part is not changing that much. It's at a negative number. So at that point, it's going to be switching like here. At no point is the real part going to go through zero at the same time that the imaginary part also goes through zero. And in that way, the envelope is always away from the origin. It's not constant exactly but it's approximately constant envelope. And for the engineering purposes, we call this modulation constant envelope. This allows us to use a class C amplifier and be much more efficient at our transmitter. And for battery powered communications applications like cellular phones, uh, transmitting, this is gonna preserve battery life and make our communication system better. Does offset make Cardi B better? I don't know. But offset does make QPSK better by allowing us to use class C amplifiers because the transition between symbols does not change its envelope very much. And thus our use of class C amplifiers doesn't cause intermodulation and preserves our battery life for longer.